Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video starts with a question. Have you ever wondered how much the exhaust port on a cylinder head is responsible for making power as opposed to the intake port? Because I have been wondering this question forever. In other words, what would happen if I just ported the exhaust ports on a set of cylinder heads? What would it do? Well, this video, I'm going to attempt to answer that. And I'm going to give you as much data as I can on it. So, here we go. I'm gonna start by apologizing for the picture quality. I had a perfect video that I made that showed the exhaust ports really good in detail. Unfortunately, it got deleted and, and I missed the window to retrieve that, so you get these two pictures. But you get an idea, it's not a bad looking exhaust port. It's the same thing I do in my fully ported stuff, the same principles. Um, yeah, it just is what it is, but here are the flow numbers. Here are the flow numbers, and where I'm pointing, that's the stock flow numbers, and then the ones next to it, that's ported. Same bore fixture, everything else. No exhaust pipe was used to flow these. As you can tell at the lower lifts, it doesn't gain quite as much, but definitely as you go up further, it gains quite a bit more, more than 20 CFM. So it's a huge gain as far as exhaust flow. And I am not at all a proponent of the intake to exhaust ratio, but of course this one made it outstandingly higher. And not my intention, I really hate that whole formula, but it's really good exhaust flow now compared to the intake flow because the intake flow if i remember right on these was only like 265 but yeah really good exhaust flow no pipe used for this this is our baseline so this is the afr enforcers completely stock the afr 4811 everything stock this was the first test that was done this was done when the first dyno section actually which turns out to be february 13th of 2023 so in that configuration, with the, those AFR enforcer heads, it made 554 horse, 530 foot-pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM, and the peak horsepower is at 6,200 RPM. That was the baseline. Now, this is the reason why I said this is not a direct A-B test, because usually we only change one thing at a time. So I'm testing manifolds, I only change one manifold. I don't change manifold and carburetor. We just don't do that. Except for dominators, you have to sometimes, which I've done all kinds of tests either way. Point being is, this one, one thing got changed. What had happened was, when this was tested, it had a stock, well, not a stock, it had a generic oil pan that was on it that someone gave. It didn't have a windage tray, and it had a stock volume generic spur gear oil pump. Nothing fancy, that's how it ran. And it started leaking anyway, and we kept plugging it. But at 230 dyno tests later, we were on the we were working on the big block Chevy and we had tested the oil pan and it had gained a lot with the oil pan. So going back to the small block, we're like, well, I wonder what would happen if we changed the oil pan on the small block. I mean, we got to change it anyway because it's got a leak. Will it still gain as much because it has less stroke? So one thing that got changed was the pan. This is what happened when we changed the pan. So we went from that generic pan that didn't have a windage tray to this one. This is a Moroso. Steel oil pan that has a kick out on the side, windage tray, uh, the Melling shark tooth billet oil pump, standard volume, and it gained a lot. Uh, but this makes it not a direct A-B test because the oil pan was also changed when I'm about to show you the baseline. The oil pan itself gained 17 horsepower and 16 foot-pounds of torque. And you could tell pretty much throughout the entire run. This is the only other part that was changed on the engine from the baseline. So whenever I'm about to show you the the gains from just porting the exhaust port, we have to remove those two numbers because that gains were from the oil pan and pump. So here are the gains. It looks humongous. The black line is stock. So that's the stock AFR enforcer heads. The red line, that's the ported exhaust port on the AFR enforcers. As you could tell, that's a huge gain. But remember, part of that comes from the oil pan. So just to give you an idea, this right here, stock AFR Enforcers, was 554 horsepower. We're now 593, almost 600 horsepower. It's pretty crazy. But we have to remove what it gained from the oil pan. 
and the oil pan gain, gained 17 horsepower and pump, I should say. So if I remove the 17 horsepower from what it gained, it gains 22 horsepower with the exhaust ported. Pretty good gain. But here's the weird part. The peak torque was here on the stock heads, 530. Peak torque now is here at 541. When we remove the difference, it actually, because the oil pan gave 16 foot pounds of torque. Let me see, yeah, 16 foot pounds of torque. When we remove that, it actually lost, as far as peak torque, would have lost five. But this is where it gets strange. That's only peak, that's here to here. This part, it's gaining. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the raw numbers printed out because I only spotted this when I was looking through the data. But chances are, peak to peak, you lost five. But throughout the rest of the RPM band, as we're going through, as it goes on further, it's actually gaining more. So it's not losing torque anymore. Now it's gaining, and because you could tell how little there, little spread there is here at the beginning, especially to here to here, but definitely a bigger spread here, which probably is going to be about 10 foot pounds of torque you're gaining. Interestingly enough, too, is where that peaks occurred. This is 6,200. This is now 6,500. So I moved the peak torque up 300 RPM, not from intake choke, which is something, because we, myself included, focus so much on intake porting, we kind of just ignored the exhaust porting, hence the reason why I want to do this test. The exhaust porting moved up the RPM peak power, not the intake. So very interesting. It's a weird test, and I thought I'd show it with you. Unfortunately, I won't get to do any more of the testing with this because what had happened was, the small block Chevy Mule for sure now is done. We made exactly three pulls before the head gasket said, I can't take this. The crack is too much. And it started letting water into the oil. Or not into the oil, but into the cylinder. In case you, you can go back and watch the previous videos to see what I'm talking about. But, and I'll, maybe I'll show one here at the end because it's kind of entertaining. But what had happened was the, um, the Kometic... But before we used a Kometic MLS gasket, but this block was used, been blown up. They put a sleeve in it and half filled it with concrete. Well, as the tests keep going on, it's 230 tests, changing heads, blah, blah, blah. There's a developed a crack between the head bolts and then crack to the um, uh, sleeve itself because it's just too thin there. And eventually it just didn't had enough of a crack that it would go over the top of the sleeve and with the MLS gasket could get right past it. So I thought we'll put a composite gasket on, you know, the cheaper ones that look like this, and we should be golden. And it was for three pulls. And then it didn't like it at all either. It went past it. Now, an interesting test, which just since you stayed around to the end, I always wondered how much power do they lose whenever it's like blowing a head gasket? Does it lose that much? Well, uh, the answer, at least from what we were seeing, was six. But that's only one cylinder. And here's what I mean. This was 593, and it repeated, by the way. It wasn't like we had one test that did it. It did 593, 593. It did 541, 542. So it was up by one. So they were really, really tight, is what I'm trying to say. And we're like, well, let's put on the Dominator. So th this was all with the 4150, because that was the baseline was with the 4150. We put the Dominator on with that, with that adapter. And we're starting it up, and it's chugging smoke pretty good. So now we know it's... It's, and it's, and it's coming out the uh, steam, I should say. It's coming out the breather, so we know what's going on. We make a pull and it made like 591, so it was down from this, and that almost never happens with the dominator. And then the next one, it was like 584, I wanna say. So it lost about 10. We pull out that spark plug. It's perfectly clean because it's been steam cleaned, but it's, um, we turn the motor over without the spark plug and then shooting out water. Even when we pull off the header, water is pouring out so luckily we got three tests done where we could get this comparison in before that happened but after that no way jose but that's a really cool test so does the exhaust porting help yes and i think we've been overlooking it for a long time i shouldn't say we i for sure have i just been doing the regular thing and it seemed like it works but now it really questions back whenever i switched from the afr enforcer heads i went to the promax project x heads they, of course, flowed more on the exhaust port too. So my question then to myself is, how much of that gain from switching to the Project X heads over the AFR enforcers was from the exhaust flow more so than the intake flow? So definitely need to do more investigation, but something to think about. Anyway, my rambling probably made this video longer, but hopefully it gives you guys something to think about too. 
Guys, remember, I am no Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys, yeah. take care.